Scandi PWA Docker setup comes with two options. Uh, you can either run it with frontend and without frontend. Uh, what is the frontend container? Well, frontend container is uh, a container which completely replaces the frontend for the application. So instead of Magento serving you the frontend, the Webpack Dev server does it for you. So let me showcase you this. Well, uh, here we have the production. Let's call it production and let's call it uh, development. So in development mode, you will have additional flag called minus F uh, Docker docker compose compose dot frontend frontend dot yaml so this is additional file which you will need to include so you will have your docker compose minus f blah 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 minus f docker compose frontend yaml up minus d to start it or you can use d c f alias which stands for docker compose with frontend and the difference here will be that all requests to uh, slash graphql graphql or slash admin will be directed to magento 2 so handled on the backend server and all other URLs like slash category, blah, 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 slash uh, one, two, three, etc. They will be handled by uh, Webpack, Webpack Dev Server. And this Webpack Dev Server will be running um, in container called yeah, Frontend. So here's how it is. So uh, just to repeat, in development mode, you need to add additional file, docker compose frontend yaml, or use the alias DCF to start it. And you can, uh, URLs like GraphQL and admin will be handled by admin. So you will be, by Magento, so you will be able to go into Magento admin or receive the valid GraphQL responses from Magento. But URLs like category, URLs like uh, products, etc., they will be handled by uh, the by the Webpack Dev server. So what does it mean? This means that for this setup, we have multiple, uh, I would say, issues, little issues. So the first one is uh, customization won't work. So customization doesn't work. Uh, in this setup, uh, you might know that Scandi PWA supports color and content customization. Well, in development mode, it won't function. Additionally, the URL rewrites slash redirects won't function. So you won't be able to use your URL rewrites or redirect from one URL to another. Uh, addition, why? Uh, because, of course, Magento Router is not involved in the response generation and instead the Webpack Dev Server does it for you. But what are the pluses? Why it's, in, it's done in the first place? First of all, it watches the files. It watches the files. But which files does it watch? It, of course, watches and compiles files from app uh, design, 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 front end, front end, uh, scan the web, web PWA, scan the web, uh, PWA. So it watches your files from a thin directory, and when those are changed, it recompiles. But why can't we do it uh, without the Webpack Dev server? Why can't we use simple Webpack? Well, because it uses in-memory cache. So it does in-memory uh, caching, caching, uh, which allows for very quick compartment and uh, only change, only files changed 
are recompiled and every file which was rounded is just reused. This allows for a quick recompilation. Uh, this, those are the nodes which you had to remember when working with front-end container. For production, for production, you must remember that first of all, every request is handled by Magento, is handling, is handling all requests. And additionally, you must remember that any change in uh, app uh, design blah 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 the folder of scan the PWA theme uh, the scan the PWA theme folder any change will require you to run a following command n n p m run build so from this directory from its directory so uh, this means that any change uh, in production will require you a full recompilation. Any change in development mode will automatically be compiled and sent to the front end and immediately render it out of hot reloaded. That's a big difference. That's a big difference to remember. And also here, you must remember that uh, Magento is aware of what's going to happen on this page. So the URL rewrites rewrites and um, customization will work uh, in production mode. So if you want to check your customization, you need to switch into production mode and remove minus F docker compose dot frontend dot YAML file from the stack. This is the big difference between front-end and production mode. Let's now see how to uh, enable this mode and how to get into it. And what is the difference? So first, yeah, also remember that you must do it. Uh, you must firstly set up uh, without the front-end container. So first setup must be done in production. Remember this. The second thing is, uh, in the docs, we can find the setup instructions for production and development. So the production, I already showed you how to set up. For development, let's see. Once again, we're using DCF now, up minus D. So let's see it. We will run DCF up minus D, remove orphans. And we can see that the front end container will be created. Uh, but there is one little subtle change I need to do is I need to uh, change the uh, xdebug configuration back. The project image should be latest if you don't debug. So now if we will force recreate or uh, set up the front end container, we should notice that uh, the front end container appears in the stack and starts to function. Let's wait until it's set up and then we will use the uh, front logs command to see how uh, is it's progressing. So let's see front logs. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, well, it seems like the front logs alias has some issues. We will fix this soon. While we haven't fixed it, we write DCF logs minus F front end. And we can notice that the application has failed to compile. Let's now try to set up uh, the development uh, setup instead of production. So to do it, we need to run DCF up minus D, remove orphans. So let's try it out. We run it 
and it looks like it's only creating the front-end container and then recreating the Nginx, MileDev and Varnish because those containers are dependent on on the front end and finally the SSL. Cool. Containers are recreated. Let's use the front logs command to see what is the application container doing, front end container doing. And as you might notice, it does some uh, building. Yeah, it has a lot of logs initially. So if we scroll to the very bottom, we'll see that boom, it's successfully compiled. And this is what you should expect to see according to documentation. So let's see if it's uh, if we're using the development command, the front logs should output us the compiled successfully. And if we check this out, yes, we do have this output. Well, this means only one thing. We should go to scan the PWA local and check. And in a first glance, nothing has been changed except now, if we create any file or uh, if we edit something in the front end setup, it should auto reload it. So let's check it out. Let's check if it does work. So to do it, let's cancel the log watch and open the scan the PW base in the VS code. And now let's change uh, anything in app design front end Scandiva PWA. Let's, by the way, open this folder specifically. So I will copy the relative path and instead of this, I will open it. Yeah. And uh, here we go. We open the application itself, uh, the Scandi PWA theme. Let's create the app folder here. You can find how you can speed up and install the inst extension for uh, optimizing the perform the uh, speed how you for optimizing your experience this kind of PWA extension uh, by following this link uh, so we have assuming you have extension installed I am pressing extend source component and let's check one let's for example do the I don't know let's go for breadcrumbs and let's only override these styles. Let's extend those styles. So what we should get here is import. Yes, something went really wrong here. So it should be export default breadcrumbs like this. Amazing. So import breadcrumbs, import override styles and export default breadcrumbs. Looks great. Okay. You might see that ESLint is configured. If you want to configure ESLint, follow this link as well. It will help you to set it up and get the same notifications if we see you are doing something wrong. Finally, you can open the override file. Notice that once again, it's full of warnings because because of course uh, the because of course the style lint is now working and let's see what can we change well let's see first of all where breadcrumbs are displayed let's go to some page like woman dresses oh here is the breadcrumbs cool let's inspect this element let's make it wider and let's inspect this element and see who on this element has a background color so we can see that this element has a class breadcrumbs and all of its children has um, have uh, an, a like breadcrumbs dash list styles this is bam we can uh, you can learn more about bam by following this link but uh, overall, what we want to find now is where the color of breadcrumbs is set. So as you can see, this is done in the breadcrumbs class or on the block of the breadcrumbs. Let's copy this style. Let's, by the way, change not the color, but the variable color. So, uh, so let's change the variable color. Let's check, uh, let's set on the root element we want the breadcrumbs breadcrumbs uh, background am i right breadcrumbs background i'm right 
we want it to be, for example, red. Let's set it to red. And let's check if it's working. Now we should get the red breadcrumbs. And we do. This is because the front-end container is immediately compiling the styles and anything which is in the app front-end scandy pwa app design front-end scandy pwa pwa uh yeah so we have changed the file and we can see the change here reflected <laughs> 